To read and write from EBM memory in Solidity, we'll need to use the assembly, and the opcodes that we'll need to use are called mStore and mLoad. mStore will take two inputs, P and B, and it will store 32 bytes to memory, starting at memory location P. The value to be stored will be this second input, B, and this value must be 32 bytes. To read data from EBM memory, we'll need to call the function mLoad and pass in the location to start reading from. From this memory location P, it will load 32 bytes. Let me give you an example. I've declared a function called test1. We'll write data to memory by using mStore and then read data from memory by calling mLoad. The data that we read by calling mLoad, we'll return it. So here I'll type returns bytes32, I'll call this b32. To call the function mStore and mLoad, these functions can only be called inside assembly. Let me first give you an example of mStore. And for this example, we'll store data into the free memory. And to store data into the free memory, we first need to get the free memory pointer, a pointer that points to the free memory. So I'll say that P is equal to, this free memory pointer is always stored starting from 0x40, and from there, 32 bytes. So say mload 0x40. This will load 32 bytes starting from memory location 0x40. This will give us a pointer, the location to free memory, a region in memory where we can start writing new data to. To the free memory, let's store 0x AB AB AB. At this point, we wrote the value 0x AB 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 at the memory location P, which is the location of the free memory. Now the free memory is initialized to the location 0x80. So at this point, this P will have the value of 0x80. For the next example, let's call the function mLoad to get the data that is stored at this free memory location. To get the data, we'll need to call mLoad and then pass in the memory location to start reading 32 bytes from. For this example, we'll pass in the location of the free memory, the free memory pointer. So here I'll pass in p. And then we'll assign the value that was read into this variable b32. b32 equals to. Okay, let's try compiling the contract and then executing this function. I'll hit Ctrl S to compile the contract, and then we'll deploy the contract, hit deploy, and then call the function test1. Now to see what's happening inside the memory, we'll debug this transaction, so I'll click on this debug button. And then I'll create a breakpoint over here, so I'll click on this line. Once the breakpoint is created, I'll skip over to the breakpoint by hitting this jump to next breakpoint. I guess we were already at the breakpoint, so let's continue. What I want to show you is as we execute this code inside here, I want to show you how the memory changes. So scrolling down, you can see here how the memory is used right now. At the free memory pointer location, that is 0x40, it has the value 0x80. In other words, the free memory pointer is initialized to 0x80, which means that we can start writing new data starting from the memory location 0x80. Okay, so let's continue executing this code over here. I'll click on step into several times. As I click on step into, you can see that the highlighted cursor moves. Currently, we're over here. So after the step, at memory location P, which will be at 0x80, we should have the value 0x AB AB AB. Okay, so let's keep on stepping into. And then scrolling down, now we can see that at memory location 0x80, we have the value AB, AB, AB. This is because we said store the value 0x AB, AB, AB at the memory location 0x80. And then in the next step, it loads the 32 bytes starting from 0x80, which will store this value. And we can see this by going back to our contract. When this function returns a value, the value that was returned is the value 0x AB AB AB. So in this example, we wrote the value 0x AB 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 at memory location 0x80. And then on the next line, we loaded the 32 bytes that is stored at memory location 0x80, which is this value 0x AB AB AB. Now when we call a function mstore and pass in the memory location to store the data, this memory location doesn't have to be a multiple of 32. And to show you this, I've created an assembly block, and inside here, let's say mstore at memory location 0, let's store 0x11, and then at mstore at memory location 1, let's store 0x22, mstore at memory location 2, store the value 0x33, and lastly mstore 
at memory location 3, store the value 0x44. Here I wrote down the first 32 bytes of EBM memory. Memory location 0 will be the first two hexadecimal numbers, so this will be over here, and then the first index will be over here, and the second index will be two hexadecimal after that, so it will be over here, and the third index will be over here. When we do mstore starting at memory location 0, we put in the value 0x11. This 0x11 will be padded with 31 bytes of 00. So what ends up getting stored starting at memory location 0 is this value. 31 bytes of zeros, and then ending with 11. After that, when mstore1 with the value 0x22 is executed, it will write 32 bytes ending with 0x22 starting from memory location 1. Memory location 1 will start here, and this will be followed by 31 bytes of 0 zeros. And then after 31 bytes of 0 zeros, it will write 22. So notice that the value 11 at the end of 32 bytes was overwritten with the value 00. Let's see what happens when we execute mstore2 with the value 0x33. The memory location 2 will be over here. And starting from here, we'll need to write 31 bytes of 0 zeros, and then followed by the value 33. So what's going to happen is this 22 will be overwritten with 00, and then in the next one byte, this 00 will have the value 33. Okay, let's go over the last example. Memory location 3 will be the fourth byte, and starting from here, we first need to write 31 bytes of 0 zeros. So this previous 33 will be overwritten with 0 0, and next to it, we will have the value 4 4. Okay, to show you this, I'm gonna compile a contract again, and then we'll delete the previous one, and then deploy a new one, and then call the function test2. And to see what's going on inside the memory, we'll debug this transaction. I'll create a breakpoint over here, and then we'll click on step into. Also scroll down to see what's going on inside the memory. I'll click step into several more times until memory location 0 will have this value. Okay, this command finished executing, and starting from memory location 0, 0, notice that we have 31 bytes of 0, 0 and ending with 1, 1. Next, let's see what happens when this code finishes execution. Keep on clicking step into. Okay, and now, notice that the 1, 1 that was at the end of the first 32 bytes is now overwritten with 0, 0, and at the beginning of the next 32 bytes, it starts with 2, 2. Okay, let's keep moving on. After this code is done executing, the 22 that was over here is now overwritten with 00, zero and next to it we have the value 33. And then after the last execution, we have the value 33 overwritten with 00, zero, and we have the value 44 next to it. So those were some examples of mstore and mload.